if you're anything like me, you had no idea that the Wheel of Time was out. It's right, season two of the Wheel of Time. Who knew? Well, friends, I am here to talk to you about the good, bad, and ugly of season two of the Wheel of Time. I reviewed the entire first season, and it's up here. And what you have to know about me is I am not a Robert Peterson, Robert Jordan. Robert Jordan, the dude who wrote the books. I've never read a single thing that he's ever written. Call me old-fashioned, but I'm a Tolkien guy, and I also like Frank Herbert. But I've never gotten around to the Wheel of Time. Many people have suggested that I should. I just don't have time for 17 books, just not in my repertoire. But for those of you who are fans, I'd be curious if you're still enjoying this show. What I will say is, A, I can't blame the show for not having any advertising for it. So if nobody knew it was available, I kind of blame Amazon for that. Maybe they're trying to bury it because they don't like it. But I will say after the first season, I was not sure if I'd be able to continue with it. But something has changed that has caught my eye. So let's talk about the Wheel of Time and see where everybody is with this one. Wheel of Time Season 2, the full season release schedule. Now what I'm going to try to do is describe the plot as best I can, which is someone who doesn't know any of the characters because they don't go do a good job of explaining who anybody is or what's going on. I think I recall that I said that this cast was one of the ugliest I've ever seen. <laughs> so maybe they've added some hotter people into this. Let's, let's take a look and see what's going on here. If I recall correctly, at the end of the last season... Um... You find out that the Wheel of Time is some sort of apocalyptical wheel of, you know, humanity raises up and technology and then it gets destroyed. And there's some evil dude who used to be part of like a futuristic world, but now there's magic. Yeah, I don't know. And none of that was real clear. So I don't exactly know what's going on. There's like this whole like class of women who are witches. They're called the Aes Sedai. They can weave magic. If a man wields it, that's bad. And they're usually insane. And the next one who's going to wield it is going to break the wheel of time or something. Sure, whatever. So the first season's a big mystery as to who is the dude or the chick who's in charge of the wheel of time. Who's the dragon? Who's going to break the wheel? Pretty obvious it was a dude. And then it turns out to be some guy named Rand Paul, the senator from wherever, Idaho, Indiana, don't, Kentucky. Don't know, not real sure. But his name is Rand, <laughs> and he is the dragon. And apparently instead of defeating the dragon, or no, defeating the bad guy, the Dark One has been freed. So all of whatever happened in the first season was moot because he just freed the guy. And I, again, have no idea how this deviates from the story. But we're left with seeing our heroes. There's two chicks. They're in a tower training to be witches. They're training to be Aes Sedai. There's a dude who's a wolfy dude. Wolfy dude's hanging out with some military guys. I don't know who they are. I don't know why they're doing it. They're going to try to cross a river. They do cross a river, I guess, at some point. They see some things. <laughs> There's the dude who's the bad guy. There was a guy who touched a, he touched like a knife and it corrupted him. And the knife, that dude is in prison with the red witch chick who looks real weird and has a big square face. And I'm confused as to why she looks like that. And then there is, uh, I feel like I'm missing some people, but maybe I'm not. There's, oh yeah, there's the main like resting bitch face witch Moraine who's actually like a famous actress I don't remember her name right now because she's not that famous but she was in Doom I know that she was in Doom Rosalind Pike Rosamund Pike something like that you you get the idea and she's with her ninja friend and they ain't having no ninja friends anymore I don't know they're hanging out having a party somewhere She's buying <laughs> poems. 
<laughs> instead of buying rocks. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. The first episode, as I may have said, is uh, it's a little boring. A lot of talking. A lot of establishing. Not sure what they're establishing. But eventually, I will say by episode two and, and finally episode three, I might be intrigued. Might be intrigued. So by episode three, the two witches in the tower, one of them is supposed to go through some arches and maybe she'll become powerful. Maybe she won't. She's back. She made it. I thought that was cool. There were some stakes. She like decided she wasn't going to. She's going to live a happy life, and then she realized that the happy life is not good. You finally get to see some more Minotaur action. God, I love me some Minotaur action. And then uh, she comes back. That's cool. You find out that Rand Paul, the senator, is actually uh, tricking people into working. Basically, he's trying to do a swap quest so that he can get to meet the old false dragon. I thought that was a good connection because I wasn't sure who it was. And I was like, oh, that's that guy who... They chained up and was insane. Well, he's like, ah, I could train you to be a better dragon. And the guy's like, you can't train me to do nothing. But what I thought was fascinating was, it's kind of a jerk. The guy's, uh, the false dragon's in an insane asylum and Rand beat up the old guy who was taking, the guy who was taking care of him so that he could take his place. And then he had to get like, uh, he had to Rochambeau somebody for a bottle of wine or something. And he's banging some hot, wizard or witch chick i don't know she's the head of a brothel i don't know what her deal is but rand is burning stuff down probably because he's a dragon i'm gonna assume that's a thing so that's as far as we got there then we get to moraine uh there's some like not that great fight scene or it's like all dark fight scene not super cool they fight some uh nazgul's who have big mouths the nazgul's they lose because some dude lights a sword on fire. That stuff happens. It's a thing. But then they find out that uh, whatever, that the ninja guy, he's not, they're not bonded anymore. He's got samurai swords. She don't need them samurai swords. She's all on her own. So rustic bitch face, she's on her own. She don't need no man. Okay, fair enough. She's devoted to the dragon. Fair, okay, keep it going. Then we have Werewolf Dude, which is the coolest part of the entire series so far. Far, Werewolf Guy is uh, joins some random army, and they're trying to help some people. Well, it turns out that they released the Dark One's lieutenants or something, and this part's pretty freaking cool. Almost as cool as anything I've ever seen in Game of Thrones, where they're literally carrying this woman on a ziggurat, like a giant pyramid, it's pretty freaking enormous. They're carrying her, and she's got her face covered. She's given like commands. Her army look absolutely freaking scary and awesome. I thought that was really cool. And instead of killing everybody, they're dragging them out so they can join indentured servitude. Well, there's a one-eyed dude who ain't having none of this, who's part of the party with the wolfy guy. And, uh, yeah, he meets American History X but to the extreme where it's he won't he won't bow so if you won't bow you get the horn and they literally punch his face into a horn and it like sticks out at the back of his head it's freaking awesome i was like all right this game's got or this show's got some some stakes now i'm kind of interested in what happens next and I like the guy, you know, on the ziggurat, standing next to the girl, the woman who's got super long nails and giving out commands. It's a little weird because there's she's got some chick wizards or chick, whatever. They kind of have like binkies in their mouths. Like I'm not gonna lie, that was a little weird, a little off putting. Don't need a chick with a binky in her mouth. But I will say the rest of the costume design was ooh a plus. Mwah, I like it. And then. Uh, I like the fact that the the uh, the dark one is hanging out there. I like that guy. He's kind of like slick and sophisticated. So you may be changing my mind. I first episode, I was like, I cannot. This is not. This can't be happening again. I I can't be suckered into a whole series of just not good enough. And then by the second episode, I was like, oh, there's a little bit better of a fight scene. Things are. Uh, uh. But then the third episode, and I was like, hmm, I could be interested in this. 
So uh, what they're saying, just so you know what the release schedule is, along with me, apparently they dropped the first three. That happened on September 1st, September 8th, 15th. It's going to be weekly now. <coughs> so you get to catch each each week. And uh, tell me what you think. Should I keep reviewing these? I'm going to watch it because I think it's kind of interesting. What might be was ki- I was kind of good. Um, there's some sex holes. No one actually ever has sex. There's no nudity in this, which is kind of disappointing. But they did sort of have a sex hole. So you'll have to find out what that is. It started as a glory hole and it got bigger. Let's Let's say that. Critics are saying it's a more assured, more epic, finds its footing. Uh, this is from Rotten Tomatoes. I don't think anybody even knows it. The early tomato meter. Yeah, if you go up the first episode, it's not good. And you got in order to even get to the third episode, it's like three hours. Like It's a lot to get through. But it is definitely an improvement. I definitely see like it looks more interesting. I, I like the costume design. Um, I'm liking it better than I did before. So let's see it go further. I'm going to keep at it. You let me know what you guys think. Am I wasting my time? I'm sure the source material is good. I have not read it, and I'm not going to do it anytime in the near future unless you subscribe. Maybe then. You tell me if I get enough subscribers, maybe I'll read it, and then we can. I will do as he explains, where I explain the entire thing. In the meantime, let me know in the comments below what should I do. Should I keep up with it? Am I am I missing the boat? Have if my mind is saying I'm leaning more towards yes than no? I'm feeling it's a little more positive. Let me know. I read all the comments. But in the meantime, we do have a full length audio podcast that you could check out yourself. It is free to you on Stitcher, iTunes, Spotify, all those great places more, plus our home for fun. YouTube, come live stream with us. 7.30, Friday nights, Eastern Standard Time, p.m. It's a good time. Kick back, relax, have a drink. You're going to have a good time, I promise you. It's full of all sorts of craziness. Off the hook. So anyway, that's all for me because I am on to the next one.